Has anybody ever seen the movie um, Evan, Evan Almighty with uh, Jim Carrey? You know, Morgan Freeman, who always seems to play God or something. Um, so I think some people actually think Morgan Freeman is God. But, thus I digress. Either Morgan Freeman or George Burns. I'm not sure which. But I digress. In that movie, uh, Morgan Freeman needs a break and he gets, finds Evan and gives Evan all the, all the wonderful things of being God. And I remember the scene where all of a sudden his head started going nuts because everybody was praying to him and he couldn't make any sense of it. He had no idea what was going on. All these voices, all these voices. And, 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 then, and then he said, these things have to be organized in some manner. And so just like Sue likes the, 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 the old Dewey Decimal System, I mean, see, yes, they were all put in the Dewey Decimal System card file and he went to open it up and it went flying out the window or something like that. Can you imagine what it must be like to be God and listen to all of those prayers. Listen to all those prayers that are being prayed. There must be millions of prayers each hour prayed in every single language. What do we do with all these prayers? Hmm. If there is any one common denominator, I suspect, it could be summarized by the words, gimme, gimme, gimme this, gimme that. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Um, we lost half of our children's message crowd here, so I was going to do a children's message on that. But, hey, it's all good. Um, Caleb, Nathan, would you guys ever walk up to a stranger and say, give me a candy bar? No. Leo, would you ever walk up to somebody on the, on the street and say, hey, man, give me 20 bucks? No. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme. That's what we're all about. So, that would not be true of prayers, our prayers. And that is, to some extent, in keeping with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. He taught us to say, give us today our daily, what? Bread. Right. So, it must be that it's all right to ask for things. But we should examine our prayer lives to see if our prayers ever rise above asking if we have grown in the Christian faith. Exactly. You see, sometimes we have to think about things. Now, we, we travel around places periodically, and sometimes there are nice resorts out there, or there are nice hotels that you can go to. And inevitably... Some people love to call room service. Not us. No, we don't call room service. But some people like to call room service. You know, you pick up the phone. You pick up the phone, and, and there, there somebody is. You say, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And then you hang up the phone. Somebody's just anxiously waiting there to bring it to you. I want breakfast, I want lunch, I want dinner, I want a chocolate milkshake. Whatever your heart desires, and whatever your stomach will tolerate. That's what you can do. You can call it, it'll just be there. Or by another motion of the wrist, you can telephone for someone who will get a soiled shirt clean. Or somebody who will take your wrinkled dress or your wrinkled uh, suit and press it for you. It'll all be perfect. And that's the concept that some of us have about prayer. We have created God in the image of the divine bellhop. Quite honestly, prayer for us is the ultimate in Room service, wrought by direct dialing. Furthermore, no tipping, no, you, know, you don't have to charge every, you don't have to pay for anything, you just charge it to that big, that big uh, credit card in the sky. That's not what we're about. That's not what we're about. Prayer is many things, but I'm pretty sure it's not one of those things. Billy Graham who has just so much great insight. He once said prayer is more, is more than verbally filling in some requisition blank. It is fellowship with God. It is communion with the Lord through praising him, rehearsing his promises, and then sharing our needs. 
We don't just fill out a requisition ship slip saying, here, this is what I want, God. Take care of it, please. What Billy Graham says corresponds to the pattern of the Lord's Prayer. Graham says that we communicate with God and we praise him and only then, only then, sharing our needs, Jesus said for us to pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Only after that point does Jesus teach us to pray, give us today our daily bread. The asking follows establishment of a relationship with God. We get to know him as our Heavenly Father who is always there, always loving, and, and, and also rooting for us and providing for us, always fighting for us, always forgiving us, always weighing what we could need and not need. And once we get to know God in that way, it is the most natural thing in the world that we should want to thank him and to praise him. It is also the most natural thing in the world that we would ask him for guidance and sustenance. You know, there are people who want God to be their genie in a bottle. I, I, I will say that I, um, I was ministering not so long ago with somebody who had cancer. And this person was angry at God because, because uh, he allowed her to have cancer as she's smoking while we're talking about how can God possibly do this? How can God make me have cancer? He must not love me. You know, there are some things that it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. God's not a genie in the bottle. He doesn't do what we say. And so, in this Psalm 39, it's a great, wonderful example of prayer that lifts up the majesty and the wonder of God before asking for anything. Psalm 193, here's verse 1 through 12. David writes, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. That's scary. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I am far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. Isn't that interesting? You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there too. If I ride the wings of the morning, I will dwell by the farthest oceans. Even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. This psalm goes on to magnify the wonderful nature of God. It is not until the end that the psalmist begins to ask for things. David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the paths of everlasting life. This is rather elegant asking by comparison with ours, isn't it? Don't usually have those fancy words that the psalmists have. But it's important instead that we know that what the psalmist says when he says, Search me, God, and know my heart and lead me in an everlasting way. God loves us so much. God loves us so much that we should, we should understand that we don't go to God and say, I want to pray for a new car, God. God, give me a new car. Can you make it a Mustang? Can you make it a this? By the way, there's a Mercedes for sale that I didn't know about. I want to avoid suggesting that we should 
not pray for a new car or should we not pray for a comfortable retirement? A part of really accepting God as our Father is feeling free to say anything to him. Clement of Alexandria said that prayer is conversation with God. And it is important that we be able to converse with him about everything that is important to us. He was standing right here during Advent. I've used this before. But I came up with this idea. Just turn your phone off and talk to God like this. Talk to God like you would your dad. Talk to God. Say, hey, how's your day going? This is how my day is going. Give him adoration. Give him praise. Give him prayers for others. Give him thanksgiving for the things that he has given to us. That's what we need to do. Not like some people who say, well, you know what? I pray for the same thing every night. God knows what I want. God knows what I'm thinking. You know, I just, I just say, ditto. That's not a prayer. Ditto from last night. That's not a prayer. God wants us to be in relationship with him. God loves us so much. Mother Teresa said that prayer enlarges the heart until it is capable of containing God's gift of himself. We all need to remember how much God loves us. God loves us and he calls us his children. God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is a love. That is a love that comes with blessings. And I close with this. There was a mother who noticed that her little girl was in her room for a long time. And she had, the little girl had said, I'm going to go to my room and pray to Jesus. Finally, when the little girl came out, her mother asked her what she had been doing in her room for such a long time. When she had just gone in to pray, the little girl replied, I was just telling Jesus that I love him. And he was telling me that he loves me. And we were just loving each other. Today, I challenge you, for the rest of the week, try to be like that little girl. Try just to go in and love Jesus. Love Jesus. Let him love you. Don't go asking for the world. Just enjoy the time with him. So. And Lee, do we, do we sing about Jesus? Do we sing about Jesus? And what do we sing about Jesus? Jesus, Jesus loves me. Right? And that's the one thing I always want you guys to remember. It's Jesus loves me. Okay?